really, y'all just some beautiful. Man, I tell you, God know what he's doing, don't he? Amen. Amen. Everybody, I want y'all to hear what I'm about to say. I love everybody. Amen. There's absolutely nothing you can do to make me not love you. Quit saying, oh, oh, why you oh, oh, it? Yeah, you Amen. Uh -oh. I'll be preaching a series. It begins today. It's a very, uh, uh, I think, informative. Some of it uh, you have heard before. Some of it you may not have. So be it. I obey my king. Amen. Amen. Uh, so the, uh, this series will be part one beginning today. All right. So uh, just bear with me as I allow the Holy Ghost to use me. Amen. You know, uh, uh, we live in a, in a time. You know, where edu you know, people can find out information pretty quick. They, they got internet, you know, they got all this other stuff that people just find out real fast. Okay, they, they, they don't even have to, you know, if it take more than 30 seconds, it's take it too long. Amen. And so knowledge, you know, is ready to be had. But, you know, folks think that a little bit of knowledge makes you mature. Come on now. Uh, Jesus came because he obeyed God. He came because he obeyed his father. He didn't come because he was his own father. See, some of y'all trying to be your own pastor sometimes. When you disrespect the ministers on rostrum, you disrespect me. When you think they're out of order, you're saying I'm out of order. Especially if they're doing the things that God has commanded me for them to do. Whenever you disrespect, and then you want to know why you're not a licensed minister. You get full of yourself, mm. and you want to disrespect the preachers. Mm. Come on, preacher. And that includes anybody that that shoe fit. Mm. Stop it. Mm. Be patient with God, and God will be patient with you. Amen. Amen. Do not let that come to my ears again, men. Mm. Please don't. Amen? Amen. Amen? I say this because I love you, and I want you to grow. But just because you know something don't mean you ready. Come on, preacher. Come on. Amen. Amen. Intellect and intellectualism and maturity are two different things. <laughs> you can be as smart as you want to be, but if you're not mature and you're not responsible, you don't have your, your, your temperament and your conduct under control, you like a 13-year-old child. Amen. Well, what about my feelings? You a man, get your feelings under control. You want to be a leader, get your feelings under control. You ain't RuPaul. You're supposed to be a man, be a man. Huh? I ain't even going to ask y'all how many of y'all been on the same job for five years. Boy, it's quiet now. Uh, so anything, you know, but you want to run stuff. Because you think, well, I've been at the church this long. How come I ain't licensed? Because that's why. That very attitude keeps you from growing. Amen, Bishop. Uh, amen. Got to get y'all. If you want to be a, a bishop, a pastor, good. I'll help you do that. But not the way you want it done. I'm going to do it the way God says do, do it. Amen. Amen. And I know some of y'all smarter than me, and that's okay. I'm not offended by that. But you don't want to put your resume next to mine. Trust me, you don't want to do that. Not because I'm all that in a bag of chips, but because I'm talking about a resume of life, what you've been through. Some of y'all got the stone, picked it up, put it in your slingshot, and played with it. See, I cut the head off the giant. Uh, some of y'all still wondering how much cheese I put in the wagon before I brought it to the battlefield. And I'm going in the temple eating of the showbread. Somebody need to hear me. I am so tired of these novices thinking that they're, I'm just as much holy as you are. Really? Well, then if you were, you wouldn't have to say that. How are you going to correct a pastor you can't correct your children? How are you going to do that? You can't make sure all your bills are paid on time. But you want to be a minister, a deacon, ordained in this church? Really? God bless y'all. I love every last one of you. 
but God has put me in charge to prepare men to be men. Amen. And that's what I'm going to do. Amen. Suck it up. Humble yourself. Go apologize where you wronged one of these men. And you don't do it again. Shut up until God exalts you. And do I, can I get an amen over here? Amen. Can I get an amen over here? Amen. Can I get an amen right here? Amen. Yeah, you see, you're supposed to amen me. Even if you're upset right now, you ain't swallowing and say, hey, amen. Amen. <laughs> Just get it out your system. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now can I preach what I'm supposed to preach? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all thought that was the message. But Jesus had to obey God. Jesus had to obey his father. Because that's what sons do. People are trying to, they, I love it how they try to go around the way to try to correct me with who Jesus is they'll call my ministers they'll call the deacons they'll call their wives and say yo your pastor's a false prophet but none of them will sit down and get in the scripture with me they won't do it because they know they don't handle the skill the, the, the scriptures with wisdom I've had so many men come to me I remember a brother brought some men a man to church and that man wanted to, to, to teach me about who Jesus was and that he was in fact his own father. But he stepped into my arena. Let me tell you something. If you're going to fight a lion, make sure it's a cub. You don't go into a full grown lion's den and think you're going to whoop that lion. So he came in and, and, and we went through Bible study and that's what we're going to do for the next few weeks. Because I want you skilled in the use of the word of God. I don't believe God wants you to be ignorant. Paul said, I will not have you ignorant, brethren. And, and, and so we're going to talk about who Jesus is. First of all, let's establish one thing. He is Lord. He is the Son of God. Amen. Will, we, will you pray with me this morning? Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come bowed before you. Thankful for your wisdom that comes from on high. Because there's power in the name of your son, Lord. We count on that power. Give us hearts of receptivity, Lord, that we might receive of your word. Anoint our ears that we might hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. As it pertaineth unto the rock of salvation. Lord, we thank you. Anoint your servant today. That you might be pleased in using me. Is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I have a grandson, and I thought about him this morning. He came to the house, spent some time with me yesterday. He's three years old, and he can spell words with eight, nine letters in them. Some of y'all wouldn't even know how to pronounce some of those words. But yesterday morning when he came, he stood next to my chair. It's funny, man. It was just amazing. I'd say that to his uncle. But he stood. He said, he said, Pops. Do you know David and Goliath? I said, yes. He said, I said, what do you know about David and Goliath? And he was excited. He said, he said, David saw him and he was real big. He said, and he took a stone and he put it in the slingshot and he was going through the motions. He said he was going, he put it in the slingshot and he did it like this and he turned it and he threw it and he hit Goliath in the forehead and he fell to the ground like he, he said, he hit Goliath in the forehead. And he said, I said, he, he did. I said, what did he do next? He says, his eyes got big. He was excited to tell me. <laughs> he said, he got up real quick. He said, he, when he, he said, when he fell, he took his sword and he cut his head off and killed him. <laughs> I said, boy, look at you. I said, yeah, I know that story. He said, that's a good story. I said, yes, it is. See, what we don't find in the story too readily is that Jesus was present. But he was present as the Christ. He was Savior. In that moment, he was the stone and the sword. 
See, David, Goliath carried his own doom in his sheath. He just didn't know it. See, a lot of people that want to attack me as to who I am, carrying the sword with them, they carry their own doom. Because I got the rock. And I got the sling. And I ain't scared. I serve the almighty king of glory. Did you want to bring that back to me? Who's got it? Go ahead and put it. Where is it? Because I need to move around. I don't, I'm, I'm, oh, this is it? No. You don't use it? What's wrong? Okay. He wants me. I, I knew it was wrong. I got to move. I, it's hard. I'm going to try to stand still a little bit longer because I want to get this out. I want you to understand. Jesus is the rock of salvation. But we are girded about with the sword of the spirit. That is the only weapon we have. So here is the beginning of wisdom and understanding who Jesus is. This series is called Jesus, the Son of God. The Bible says, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The ether moved upon the face of the deep. The spirit moved upon the face of the deep. But God said, and it was. He said, let there be light. That was the beginning of Christ. Christ was with him in the beginning. And he was spoken. John says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. There was not anything made that was made that was not made by him because God said. So now we know why he's the Word. And then John goes on and he tells us, and the Word was made flesh. Now, if I read my word right, and I'm sure I do, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man. And if my memory serves me right, Jesus was called son of man quite often. And we're going to get through some of this. I'm going to take my time because this is a series. But I want you, you need to be taking notes so you can check what I'm saying. Because people are being taught that Jesus made Mary pregnant and climbed in her womb and gave birth to himself. God did not come down and put on flesh. He did what he did in the beginning. He spoke a word and it is so. How many daddies in here got moms pregnant with yourself? Well, we're made in his image. Well, how come you couldn't do that hat trick? If God could do that, but then he made us in his image. We ought to be able to do that too. But that's not how it is, is it? First the natural, then the spiritual. But people get caught up in looking for excuses. Okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. The Holy Ghost slowing me down. When you look at what God did in the beginning, God did it throughout time. He said he was going to have a son. He spoke a word, and the word was made flesh. How can you get an infinite God in a finite being? How do you do that? You can't do that. Jesus continues to tell us who he is. He tells us he was sent. He was sent. He was sent. He was sent. My father is the husbandman and I'm the true vine. But you got people out there teaching everybody this bad trinity doctrine. And they don't even know where it come from. And they don't know how to break it down because they have earthly wisdom. They don't have godly wisdom. This wisdom comes from God. You can go to seminary to be just as, you probably be a little bit smarter, but you're still dangerously messed up. Seminary putting out a whole bunch of messed up preachers. Smart as a whip. Degreed all over the place. Don't know no kind of truth. Come on, preacher. Go with me in your Bibles this morning. Yes, Holy Ghost. The Gospel of John, chapter 5. We're going to take our time. Because I got some, some stuff to teach. That's why people are messed up. They, that's why people always say, well, you can't be perfect. The devil said that lie. Jesus said, be therefore perfect. 
even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. That's what Jesus said. Who you going to believe? The devil? Some good right reverend with eight degrees and all kinds of stripe on their sleeve? Because they all preach alike, basically. But they're all wrong if they preach that Jesus is his own father. Amen. We're going to go to chapter 5. And, and if you pray for me, God may use me. Look with me at verse 817. You, you really ought to, when you go to church, you ought to go to church ready to learn and take notes. Y'all there? Say amen. amen. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and, that's a conjunction, I work. That's two distinct individuals. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. You may be seated. See, some people, they, they don't, they don't want to let the spirit open up their minds because the, the dean at school already did that. Professor already did that, put that junk in their head. Jesus just got through. Even these heathens understood what he said. He said, my father hitherto worked, and I work. He said, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. So wait a minute. What you trying to say, bitch? I'm trying to say Jesus is the only begotten son of God. That God, in fact, did what God said he was going to do. He didn't pretend to have a son. He didn't come down and masquerade as his son. He had a son. He sent Gabriel to speak a baby into her womb, into the womb of Mary. Wait a minute. Gabriel can speak a baby, but God can't have an only son. Somebody explain that to me. And then people want to get all fancy with scripture, but, but the Bible said, Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Okay, can anybody that just met me today look around this room and point out my son? I want to, can somebody, want to, can I get a volunteer? Come on, if you could point out my son, I want to stand up for me, man. God bless you. You just met me today, right? We don't go back, right? You don't know my family or nothing. Point out my son. When you see him, does he look like his daddy? Almost. Thank you, sister. You can sit down. I used to be that handsome. But I got handsomer. Jesus did say, when you see me, you see the father. But he was not saying that I am the father. That's not what he was saying. He came to let you know that if you see me doing what God told me to do with the father, then you can bank on it. He's going he's gonna to sign. He's going to endorse it. He is endorsed by his father. That's what he's saying. His spirit, his power, his authority. He said, I'm just like my daddy. Jesus was called in the temple. They said, now, look, why is he doing all this stuff on the Sabbath day? He think he all that in a bag of chips. He's supposed to sell stuff to send his youth to the Houston thing. How come he ain't selling stuff trying to make us look bad? Mm -hmm. They got mad because he was doing stuff on the Sabbath. See, things that they, everybody had a little normal operation. They want to, even the Catholics, they have raffles so you could get you an explorer or an expedition. Yes, Holy Ghost. So now you have this understanding where people think that just because it's in the book and you can read, make it, you understand it. Let me tell you something. The Bible doesn't mean what it says until you understand what it means. And you cannot understand what it means except the spirit of the God, illuminate, the Lord, illuminates your mind. Novices go around and they want to correct me, call me out. My name, no. if you're so bold, come and sit down and talk to me. If I'm wrong and you're right, you're obligated to teach me. Because God will hold it at your hand. Because, see, I believe I'm a watchman on the wall. And, and, and if I see the sword coming, I'm supposed to warn the people. If you're wrong as an individual or as a group, I'm supposed to warn you and try to get you out of that thing. But Jesus, here he is. And he says, I'm doing what my father sent me to do. Then answered Jesus, verse 19, look at it. And said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
the son can do nothing of himself. But what he see the father do, but what he seeth the father do, but what, <laughs> but what he seeth the father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. So now you have this understanding. Jesus keep telling us, God did have me. He is my father. I am him, but he's not me. We're in one another, and I in him, and he in me, but I am still able to die. God cannot die. He never could die. Jesus absolutely 100% died. He died he didn't swoon and pass out he didn't take siesta he didn't take an old man nap like i do he died god cannot die but jesus said everything i saw my father do i do now what did his father do his father split a sea he walked on it huh his father healed people, put leprosy on people. Jesus healed leprosy of people of leprosy. Miriam caught leprosy. He even made Moses' hand leprous when he put it out of his shoulder. But, but amen, Bishop. So Jesus, the Christ, who was the lamb slain in the beginning, he's seeing what his daddy does. He saw what he did. He said, well, look, I'm going to be just like my Hallelujah. But people say, you know, uh, Bishop White, you know, he's a prophet. He's saying that, that Jesus isn't God. But if you say he's God, I'll go with that. But he's not his own father. See, that's why I have. See, God give me wisdom. There's a difference. Because did not Jesus say that ye are gods in the scriptures? They, he said, well, then why do you seek to kill me? Because I say I'm the only son of God. So ye are gods. How do we say that? Because Jesus says so. So here we have this understanding. I'm going to take my time because I want you to get this. So now we know that Jesus said the son can do nothing of himself. In other words, he has to receive instruction from the father, guidance from the father. And the things that he does do, he says God gave him these things to do. How? By showing him these things. The father showed him these things. He showed him how to give life to somebody that was dead. He said, Talima, uh, to, what was it? Talitha Kumai. He said, get up. He said, now feed her. Jesus breathed into Adam. He got up. Adam was created alive. He just didn't have the Holy Ghost yet until God breathed in him. God don't create make, uh, dead things. He make things dead. Amen? Amen. Okay, so now, yeah, see, y'all got to stay with me. See, this is, this is the kind of truth. This is word. This is spiritual truth from on high. So now, if Jesus said, I can't do anything but what I see the Father do. That means he can't get beyond what God has given him to do. God put all power in heaven and earth in his hand. So what did he do? He just said, well, here I have all power as my father, but then as my own son, I'm going to give myself power over here. No, God gave him all power. The Bible says there's one God, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. That's pretty plain. That's pretty plain. So, so now you're trying to say that God lied. He didn't really have a begotten son. He came down and tricked and masqueraded. Now, I'm going to show you what Trinity is wrong. I got to touch on Trinity right now because he wants me to. You have to understand why Trinitarian doctrine was established and where it came from. There was a man, a church father by the name of Tertullian. Tertullian lived in Alexandria, Egypt. And, and there was a heretical move at that time to say that Jesus Christ was not divine. He was not heaven sent. He was not a part of, of God. He was not holy. He was not divine. And Tertullian, being a, a, a man of God, said, no, no, that's not wrong. He said, so he took him to Matthew 28. And he showed him what Jesus said. Go ye therefore baptizing, making disciples of men, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Can somebody in here, anybody in here named Father? No, that's a title. In the name of the Son, that's a title. In the name of the Holy Ghost, that's a gift. See, so now he did that. He gave them that. He said, look, surely this shows that he's a part of what you would call a triune God. 
Well, the problem with that is he didn't intend for it to be a doctrine. He was just showing him that Jesus had the authority to send you out in his name. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The only name where salvation is found is in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he is the one that God says, if you don't have the son, you do not have the father. How is it going to look? You're going to be fawning all over me, loving all over me, and you all bishop, oh bishop. And look at my son's son and expect me to receive you. You can't receive my son and you think I'm just going to delight in you. Oh, you hate my son? Oh, but you do love me, right? So you expect God to do that? You reject the fact that he had a son? That's called Antichrist. That's besides Jesus. Instead of. That's what Antichrist means. It don't mean against. It means instead of. Also with. That's what Antichrist. Antichrist spirit is all over the place. That's why you got people thinking it's okay to do all this stuff. That's why they light candles. That's why them big good time Baptists, they want all your money so they can get new, new uh, uh, airplanes. And all that junk. People see me time a tie by the boat shack. Oh, see me time a tie by the boat shack. Oh, see me time a macaroni cheese, macaroni cheese, macaroni cheese. If you're a mature Christian and you have the gift of tongues, then you understand what the Spirit says. Huh? If you're going to speak, then let somebody interpret for the edification of the body of Christ. But if you're going to speak in a prayer language, then you do that at home in your closet. Huh? Amen. This is wisdom. See all these folks run up and down with, well, you ain't got the Holy Ghost unless you speak it in tongue. Really? Give me scriptures for that. I sat down with a pastor. He was pastoring long before I was, and he was still just as wrong. He said, well, well I've been preaching this for a long time. I said, brother, you've just been wrong long. That's why God had us meet, so I can help you. And I laid open the scriptures. That brother was stuck on Acts chapter 2. He could not, his eyes, looked like his eyes kept just bouncing back. Every time he tried to go to Corinthians, his eyes just went all the way back to Acts. So now you have Jesus saying, for the Lord, look, look, look with me, I mean, in verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself do. Wait a minute. Wait, how does that happen? If he's, if he's his own Father, then how he going to show himself something? That's like me getting up teaching myself how to make some, a bologna sandwich that I already know how to make. Okay, Terrence, what? We're going to make a bologna sandwich. We are? <laughs> yes. God is not schizophrenic, neither was Jesus. First you take the, but, the bread. Okay, I got the bread. <laughs> really, you think Jesus is going to sit up there and talk to himself? Hi, wait a minute, I'm, I'm trying to help. This is in the King James Bible. This ain't in Tommy Jones' extended version of the Negro King James Version. He said, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. That's like, brothers, you know how it is when you got your son or your grandson, and you working on your car, and you think you know how to change a starter, and you want to show your grandson. If you show him right, he's going to be able to do that. If you show him wrong, he's going to do it wrong. But God ain't going to do no wrong. So he's showing Jesus everything. Uh, he, 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 look, 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 let's look at it. He said, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Folks still don't get it. Gee, they don't want to believe Jesus is the son of God because then there's a mandate placed upon us. Because Jesus prayed before he died. He said, Father, he said, make them one as we are one. He said, I in you, you in me, and they in us. So now, everybody that believed that Jesus was his own father, you could just go ahead and bow down to each other because then he just included you in that. Look in the mirror and say, hey, father, hey. How you doing? I'm fine. You lost your mind. What's wrong with you? This is plain to me. But people that want to exalt themselves and people that got snared in bad doctrine, they hold on to that thing and then they don't obey Jesus. Jesus said, search the scriptures. He said, for in them you think you have eternal life and they are those that testify of me. He said, you have to search. You'll look harder for your remote than you will for the truth. 
You'll, you'll spend five, you'll spend an hour and 50 minutes looking for the right fajitas for your barbecue. And 13.9 seconds trying to find some truth. Amen. Okay. I'm going to preach anyway because I got a mandate from heaven. Huh? To all of y'all listening, all you real bright people, all you holy people out there that just, I know I'm slow. Okay, I buy that. I look stupid. Okay, fine. But I got the Holy Ghost. Hey, Amen. You can't change that. And I know this wisdom is not of man. This wisdom is of God. You have no idea who you're messing with. I am one of the sons of God. Hallelujah. I know who called me. I didn't go to college and say, you know, I think I want to be a pastor one day. That sounds like a good career move. <laughs> you know how some folk do? They all up in seminary chasing hoes. They either chasing hoes or being hoes. Some of them got good intentions. They don't intend to get caught. Uh, but look, let me show you something. Yeah, that's what's wrong with nobody want to be honest. Everybody want to dance around the truth. A sissy is a sissy. You can call him a faggot. I don't care. Because it's nasty. Why am I going to tell him something? He called them something good like gay. Gay means happy. Gay means delightful. But see, the devil like to take nice things and make them. Ugh. I just, uh, no. Uh huh. They, like he got people believing pride is good. Pride ain't good nowhere in the scriptures. It is nowhere in scripture. I've had people, ch I've, well, you, you, pride, pride, ain't nothing wrong with being proud of your children. I said, yes, it is. Pride goeth before a fall, and a heart. A pride goeth before destruction, and a hearty heart before a fall. The Bible said he hates the pride. He hates a proud look. Pride is still pride. I don't care what Webster say. It's still pride. That's what got Satan kicked out. Let me keep on, because I, I got to share it with this, because I'm so tired of people thinking they, okay, maybe you're smarter than me, but I know this is right. I know what God has given me. That's why you was out trying to bet on the cowboys, I was praying and fasting. Uh, while you was out trying to get your car detailed, I was trying to get some detail for my soul. Uh, while you was out there trying to slang your dope, I was trying to get deep in the word. See, I know what it's like to fast for days and days and days and call upon the name of the Lord. I've prayed, sister, I've prayed one night. I was praying so hard. I was in the spirit of God. I came out the room singing in tongues. I mean, it was just so beautiful. I, I could not understand it, but it just ministered to my soul. And then the Lord let me know. He said, you was just praising me. He said, I understood it. You were just praising me. I remember that was a long time ago. I, I know. See, so look, I got up. I used to get up 6, 7, 30 in the morning after going to bed at 1, 30, 2 o'clock in the morning from studying all day. Did that for about three years straight. There she is. That's my wife. Ask her. I would get up sometime 8.30, get me some coffee and my word, my dictionaries, my books, my research papers, and make sure I have plenty of get on my knee room. Amen. And, and so Jesus prayed every night. Who was he praying to? Hello, self. It's me again. Help, help, Peter. I think he lost his body. <laughs> you do, yeah. You can you see Jesus doing that? Who is he asking if it be your will, remove this cup from me? All he had to do was say, look, you know, hey, hey, look, what? I changed my mind. <laughs> but he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. All right, everybody in here that got a car, send yourself out there to start your car while you remain. Come on, do it, do it, do it, do it. I can. Watch. Go start my car. That's myself. You know why? Because he came from me. He is of me. He would be obeying my what? My word. He would be performing my will. That's what Jesus did. But he ain't married to Marilyn. His wife's name is, what's her name? Kira. I went, it left me for a minute. I almost called her something else. But it, it would have been a pretty name. I just wouldn't have been Kira. <laughs> Amen. So now Jesus is pointing out some very simplistic things. You need to read this. Look at this. Verse 21. 
For as the Father raiseth up the dead, as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Now, go back with me for a minute. Huh? Can y'all go back with me? Now, that, there's this moment when Jesus meets a situation whereby his friend dies. His friend's name was Lazarus. And in chapter 12, turn to chapter 12. Jesus already said he does what he sees his father doing. He said his father raises up the dead and quickeneth them. How do we know? Let me tell you how we know. Can I tell you how we know? There was a man named Elisha who was anointed by God, who spoke a woman, spoke to a woman and said, because you bless me, you're going to have a son in the time of a woman. And that son was born in nine months. The baby grew up and died. And the man of God went in the room with the baby and seven times laid upon him. And the child recovered because of the anointing of God. There was a man named Ezekiel. God asked him, he said, Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, yeah, Lord. He said, can these dead bones live? He said, Lord, thou knowest. Lord, thou knowest. He said, speak and prophesy unto these dead bones. And the dead bones begin to take on flesh as the wind blew. When the wind blew, the, the, the Bible says the flesh and the sinew begin to attach to the bones. And they were raised up an army. Let me tell you something. Everybody in here without that was all lost in their ways was dead before God. But God sent a son. He gave of his spirit so that he could raise up the dead that we were. Look at God's army. Jesus said, I saw whatever I saw my daddy did, I could do it too. He was in that. He went there and, and, and the Bible says six days before he was to die, there was a dinner. They went to to a supper at Lazarus' sister's house. And guess who was there? A man named Lazarus that was once dead. He sat at the table with him and ate with him. So Jesus said, look, whatever I see my father do, I'll do the same thing. Look with me. The very first verse of chapter 12 said Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus which was which had been dead whom he raised from the dead now now wait a minute so you trying to say Jesus saw his father raise people from the dead Jesus said before Abraham was I am People think they, they don't understand I am. They think they got it. Ooh, everything they say I am is Jesus, is God. No, it ain't. That ain't that ain't biblical. You can't even validate biblically that statement. But it sounds good. It makes for good sermons, good discussion. So now, now we know verse 17, same chapter 12, verse 17. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave. And raised him from the dead, bear record. They were witnesses to it. They said, man, Lazarus was dead four days. We saw this. His brother's probably still trying to make sense of it in glory. How in the world? <laughs> did y'all, we all there? All he did was say, roll away the stone. Uh, roll away the stone. Lazarus, come forth. And that's what he did. That's all he said, just like his father. Uh, roll away the stone. Come forth. Didn't he do that with Daniel? Roll away the stone. That had the king roll away the stone, and Daniel came out alive when he should have been dead. He should have been lion burgers. Uh, he should have been human burgers for the lion. Uh, but see, so when we look at who Jesus is, and this is just part one. I'm not going to be able to give you all of it today. But I have to give it to you today, what God would have me to give to you today. Okay, so now who sent Jesus is the question that you ought to be asking yourself. So who sent Jesus? We know that the Father sent him. God sent him just like he sent him when he was creating the world. He said, let there be light. And that light was the light of men. Jesus was not, I mean, John was not that light, but he came to bear record of that light. Huh? He can, and then John goes on and right. Go to chapter one, verse, verse chapter one. I got to show you this because this is so good. This is some good stuff. Everybody loving to say amen. amen. 
Huh? Verse 15. Uh, uh, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Read verse 18 with me. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now, anybody say that Jesus was God, the Father, they're lying. Because Jesus was seen in time. They ate fish with him. They ate bread with him. He was seen. Men saw him, but the Bible clearly say no man has seen God at any time. No man has seen God at any time. That sounds pretty different to me. But people want to try to call me all kinds of false prophets because they wallow in ignorance and fear and arrogance of heart. My boast is of the Lord. I am that I am by the grace of God. See how Paul said I am? Got that? Okay, I had to throw that in there. See, this folks like, no, everybody in the Bible say I am they God. I just fixed you. Go ahead and get your pencil eraser. White out whatever your sermon was going to be. Verse 22, chapter 5. I'm almost through. Bear with me. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. How do you do that? Now, this is pretty clear. He said, for the Father... Judge it, no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Wait a minute. So wait a minute. Here, here. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. So I get to judge. Come on, y'all. It got, it got quiet then. So when these heathens say, well, you can't judge me, say, I'm one of the sons of God. I have authority by the Holy Ghost and the word of God to judge you. Can I condemn you? No, but I can judge you. See, you ever notice judges don't put the poison in the vein of the one on death row, but they sentence them to death. By the word of God, when we speak the truth, and we speak against sin. When they do not turn, we have sentenced them to death by their own hand. They have the, see, this is too, is this too deep? Some of y'all are like, wait, did he say, did he say abracadabra? No, I didn't. I'm preaching the gospel. So here you have this, this, this depth of understanding. And then he says in verse 23, that all men should honor the son. Get this now. Come on now, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm going to read it again. That who all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Jesus said that. I didn't write that. That's in your Bible. Okay, I, I didn't write. My, my signature ain't on that, right? I, I didn't write this. See, so let, let me help you understand. So when people want to come to you and say, but do you don't believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Yes, I have the Holy Ghost. That don't make me God. I'm not the Father. If the same Spirit, see, <clears throat> please, I hope the genius is looking, Brother Chuck. I hope he's listening. Oh, holy genius. Hear me now. If the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. Now, that might be deep. I'm going to break it down for you. Jesus died, and that same spirit that I now have in me called the Holy Ghost quickened him so that he would live again. If it dwells in me now, it has given me life. I'm no longer dead. Oh, that's somebody I'll say amen. amen. Somebody, I mean, that's, that's Bible. See, that's why the prophet said line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Let every word of God be established. 
I, you know, but these people get a hold of something and they say, wow, man, that's so deep. That's why ain't nobody perfect. Well, you lying. He didn't come so you could still do wrong. He came to change your heart. I'm almost through. Bad with me. That's just for today. This part one. I want you to understand something. That's why people are messed up. They go to church every day, every all Sunday, every Sunday. They're really important in the church, and they're doing, trying to do good work, and I, and I praise God for that. But they're messed up because they want to believe that Christianity is a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Catholicism, Baptism, Methodism, Lutheranism, Islamism, Judaism, Buddhism, all those isms, those are religions. Jesus didn't come to establish a religion. He came to change the hearts of men that they might be reconciled unto the Father. He did not die and raise up again so you could be good called good right reverend and at your Easter egg hunts and your Christmas party and your Halloween basket farm autumn thingy that you do and all that other heathenistic thing like Valentine's Day. That's a filthy, filthy holiday. Parents, be warned. If you if you don't indulge your children in no Valentine's Day, do your research. That's filthy. That is ungodly nasty. That has no godliness in it. That ain't nothing but about homonging and lust and lasciviousness. That's what that's about. I'm telling you, don't let your children get in and tell the school, don't you get my child involved in that junk? That's witchcraft. I, I have to obey God. Uh-huh. No, I don't want my child going holding hands singing old Christmas tree. My child just got through singing, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all time. But how you going to serve two masters? A tree and the Lord. Uh-uh. See, people want to say, well, you just bashing religions. You call it what you want. I'm just telling you the truth. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is changed humanity. He came to change the heart of man. Religion seeks to change the interior, what an exterior means. What holiness and Christianity came to do, what Jesus came to do is to change the inside of a man by, by, and, and showing forth an exterior difference. That's what that does. You can't change me on the inside just because I, you can't stop a smoker from desiring smoke just because you put a patch on their arm. You just can't do it. If you take one, if you take a gangbanger from Chicago and bring him to sunny Florida, he's still going to want a gangbang. It's just going to happen. If your daughter is, 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 is showing all her goodies in the 10th grade at her school and you transfer her to another school, she's going to show all her goodies there. I don't care what kind of school it is. They got to get Jesus in their heart. They need to get the Son of the only, the only begotten Son of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe upon Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the King of Glory. This is who we serve. We serve a mighty God who was able to speak a word into the womb of a woman, a young woman named Mary, and that young woman begot, became pregnant, and she had a baby. She popped him on the button and said his name is Jesus. It ain't Joseph Jr. His name is Jesus. Uh, ain't that something? His oldest cousin said he was before me. John was older than Jesus. And he said he was before me. How can he say that? Because he is the living word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus the Lamb of God, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So quit going around feeling like God can't do in you what he said he would do. If God said he can heal you of an addiction and break you out of that thing, all you got to do is surrender. Just make up your mind. I don't like what I've become. I need Jesus to change me. I don't like the way I am. I want Jesus to change me. I don't like the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I think, the way I drink. I need Jesus in my heart. And when you go before him and you say, Lord, here I am. God's word said that you, you brought him for me. Here is me. Here I am. Change me. Take me. Use me. Mold me. Use me. Let me work in your field, oh Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. God will do it. 
I'm telling you, God will do it. I know I didn't want to be a pastor. I was, talk, I was interviewed this morning, and I told the young lady, I said, look, people started asking me, find a place. We want you to be our pastor. I said, I ain't no pastor, but we want you to be our pastor. I said, I'm not pastor. Quit calling me that. So people were calling me, going to their houses, went to all these different churches, but they're calling me to come and teach in their house. I said, why are you calling me? Well, so-and-so said, you're a real man of God. I heard that from CBC, Hagee's Church, all kinds of Baptists and Presbyterians. Am I, am I, am I in the ballpark? They were, I had, we were booked up for weeks on end. I heard you're a real man of God. My name is so-and-so. Can you come and teach in my home? But I didn't want to be a pastor. See, some folks want to be a pastor. You know, I, you know why I didn't? Because I didn't believe I was that man. Lord, that's work. That, you're going to hold re me responsible for all of these souls. A pastor has to be willing to give up his life. He has to ignore things that he would rather be doing. Huh? He can't get all up in your face when you get all up in his. Unless you're his son. Amen. But you, uh, I didn't think, and, and so my mentor, he was 90-something years old. 80-something odd years old, he said, well, Doc, why don't you want to be a pastor? And I said, sir, I'm not cut from that cloth. I, I can't do that. I, I messed up my own life. How am I going to help people reach God as a pastor? I said, and furthermore, the word of God says, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. But he must first be blameless. The husband of one wife having his house in gravity, of good report. He has to be an example of what a godly, strong, responsible, humble man is. That's what he has to be. And I, he said, he said, well, you know, I said, and furthermore, the Lord, he said, well, you know, the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. You know what that means? I said, oh, Lord. See, some of y'all think you do. I'm going to tell you what it means. It means that God is the one that put desires in your heart. It doesn't mean you get to pick what you want. He ain't no Luby's manager. I take the mashed potatoes, the macaroni and cheese, the rice, and five pieces of white bread and a huge sugar-laden Coke. I got to go take a shot for my insulin. Spinach ain't going to kill you. But God changed my heart, and I don't regret one minute of it. I don't regret one minute of it, and I don't think I ever will. As a matter of fact, sometimes I feel so inadequate. I feel, Lord, how, how did you get me here? 18 years I've been pastoring. 18 years. And I remember for three of those years, I would wake up at 830, and my mentor, Pastor W.E. Cruz, he sometimes called me at 11 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes he'd call me uh, uh, when he got home from the doctor. He was dying. He would call me. You need to hear this. He would call me in the late afternoon. He said, Doc, what you doing? I said, I'm studying. He said, you still studying? I said, yes, sir. Then one day, oh, we'd known each other about a year. We'd be on the phone sometimes for hours, wouldn't we? Hours going over scripture, praying, going over scripture, praying. He would give me assignments after assignments after assignment. Have me digging and digging and digging and digging. And he'd say, "Are you? Would you eat today? Nothing, sir. I'm fasting." Amen. He said, "Well, I have my oatmeal, but I'll fast with you for the, for as long as I can because he was dying." And he told me one night it was about nine thirty, ten thirty. He said, "I talked to you this morning and you were still studying. You still study." He said, "Brother," he said, "Doc." The Bible said too much study and his weariness of the soul. He said, you need to get up and go for a walk. Break away from your studies for a while. Before he died, he told me, he said, you know, he said, I have to decrease so you can increase. He said, it's time for me to back away. He said, my time is approaching. He said, I have to listen to you now, Doc. He said, every now and then a traveler. I said, why do you say that? He said, Every now and then, God will send a man in the land to warn the people and to bring forth the word of judgment and a word of execution. You're that man. 
you're that man for this time. He said, I got to go now, Doc. He died about a week and a half later. But when you look at how God does a thing, if you let him, Eric, if you let him, he'll change everything about you. But you got to let him because he has a work for you and your wife to do. You got to let him just, just surrender, just stop. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Is somebody willing to say that today? Here I am. Use me. If nobody else, here I am. Use me. That's why Jesus was chosen. He said, prepare me a body. Something along those lines. He sent his right arm. Today, the offer still stands. If you will have our God to rule over you, why don't you get up out of your seat? Every eye closed except for those that will come. Pray for those that will come so that God will reign in their lives. We ask the ministers come forward to offer up a word of prayer for salvation and healing and encouragement. Why don't you come today and if you have not been serving him in spirit and in truth, why don't you come right now?